So the last time we talked about adding color to 3D models, we did it in Tinkercad using kind of a per vertex modeling technique. Well, now we're going to use a similar technique, but we're going to do it in Blender, the Blender way. Okay, so there we go. We got Blender all set up, ready with all of my defaults, just the way that I like it. And uh, we're going to get going. Now, before we start too much, I want you to know it's right over here. Cycles Renderer. I've been playing with a Cycles Renderer because it makes pretty renders and stuff like that. But let me just maximize my screen. It's not the best thing for simple modeling and stuff like that because it has nodes. Now, it's not going to bite us too much in this video, but in the next one, it definitely will. So for now, I'm going to switch it to the Blender Renderer. And uh, now we need a model to render or to, to colorize and I know a great one if we go to add mesh there is this monkey there we go there's our monkey blender artists know this monkey as Susan hello everybody say hello to Susan Susan's a great model it's got low poly but it's got some great geometry to it for us to work with now first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to scale Susan up by a factor of 10. Now she's about as wide as a standard calibration cube, which I think is fitting. And uh, But she's got no color to her. So let's go over to the materials window here. And I'm just going to grab the default uh, material right here. But I'm going to change the color to be kind of a mid-shade brown. There we go. Looking good. Now, of course, this isn't really colored. This is just one color. We want to have multiple colors in here because uh, we can do this with any FFF 3D printer. Just throw in whatever color you want, right? So what we do, we go into edit mode and we start selecting vertices. I'm going to select the eye vertices. Notice that the eyes in Susan aren't really attached. There's actually some non-manifold sections of Susan and we'll have to fix that in the future but I'm not going to worry about it for now that we're going to we're going to learn what we uh, need to know with this so down here in the material setting we can add a second material to Susan here and it's going to be a new material and it's already white which is good I like that but it's not on here until we hit the assign button boom now Susan's eyes are white so we can do the same thing. Let's let's just for fun, let's make each one of her eyes different. So I'm going to make the left eye. Uh, let's make the left eye green and assign and then make her right eye. Let's make her right eye blue. And assign that. So there we go. Susan now has two different colored eyes just for the variety of it. And uh, we can use this same technique to colorize all of Susan. So we're going to do that. We're going to cut to a time lapse as I color her nose and mouth and ears and all those things. And then we will come back and talk about what else we can do with this. Oh, there we go. Susan's all colored. All the vertexes are in place. We can exit edit mode now. Now, the great thing about this technique is that all of these materials are just kind of references and we can adjust them on the fly. Yeah, I don't like those ears. I want them to be a little bit lighter. So there we go. Let's make them a little bit less yellow, maybe. And uh, yeah, those lips, purple. What was I thinking? Let's take those lips and make them just a little bit uh, maybe bar maybe a dark red. Okay, there we go. So we can we can edit these. Now the other cool thing about this is Blender tries to maintain these colors even if we alter the geometry. So I'm going to alter the geometry in a couple of different ways. I'm going to use a subdivision surface modifier. Crank that up and notice how the new geometry that's being added. Notice how beautiful Susan looks when she gets all smooth. Hey, that is great. But notice how it tries to 
uh, assign the new vertexes coming in to their proper colors and make sure that things are assigned properly. Now, it gets a little bit weird in the ears here. Let's turn this off and see if we can see why. Yeah, I can see why. It's kind of difficult to, to make that work, but you know, it does the best that it can. And overall, it looks absolutely fantastic. Let's also, uh, let's maybe put her on the plane here and tip her so that she's a little bit more appropriate for 3D printing. But then let's flatten her bottom with a Boolean modifier. So we'll just difference it from the floor here. Boom. And there we go. So now we put the per vertex modeling on the whole thing. And notice how, yeah, even the floor is with a negative modifier, it's brown. So now with just a little bit of support, she should be ready to print. And of course I have already printed this one. So let's go take a look at it. So the print turned out a little bit different than I expected it. The, the brown on the skin, I made it too dark last time. So I've lightened it up for this time. The version that I will upload to XYZ's uh, forum for these things will have the lighter skin, but you can see the ears have the color. The eyes, uh, the eyes are a little bit difficult to see because there's not a lot of white in them. And maybe I should shrink those eyes just a little bit, just so that there's less, uh, so that there's more white around them. But overall it worked. We got the colors in there. Now I do need to talk about, same as with Tinkercad, if you put too many colors in there, too many material def definitions, that some software is not happy with that. So try to keep it to eight to 16 different colors. 16 tends to be the cap where if software is going to be limited, it's gonna be limited by that. And I hope that this statement becomes entirely superfluous in the future as all software that handles multicolor meshes uh, will update themselves to handle 200 and a thousand different materials. But part of the reason for that is because the materials that we're adding in Blender don't just have to be a color. They could be a texture that's read in from a PNG or a JPEG file that's residing elsewhere. And if we have, you know, 100, 200 of these, the definitions get super complex. So a lot of softwares intentionally cut it off so that that's not a problem. Now, we're just doing colors, so it it shouldn't be that big a deal, but you know, how do you tell the difference one to another? Either way, this technique works and it works fairly well. Now, I have discovered another way to do this with the Boolean modifier that I will show you next time. And then, you know, the truth is this method really isn't the preferred method for adding color to models. And so I will show you that in the future as well. But as always, I want to thank you very much for watching. I want to thank my Patreon supporters for backing me during this time when your support is more needed than ever. Thank you very much for everything you guys give. It really means a lot to me. And as always, I want to remind you, safety first. I'll see you next time. Do you want to know more about 3D printing but don't know where to start? Or did you buy a 3D printer but you need some help getting it going? Don't panic. The beginner's guide to the 3D printing galaxy is here, now, for you. Buy it on Amazon. <laughs>